Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Adorama TV. Today, we're going to look at landscapes, lenses, styles, and techniques to improve your landscape photography. We're here at the wonderful Heaver Castle in Kent, where Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn, grew up. Adorama TV presents Stay Focused with Doug McKinley. So we're here at the castle, and it's looking great. Hopefully, we'll get some really good pictures while highlighting the seven key components of what makes a good landscape picture. First up is depth of field. Great landscape pictures have great depth of field. Lens choice. Now, if you're using a wide angle lens, like this 24 millimeter lens, everything from the near foreground to infinity should be sharp. Now, the best apertures are between f8 and f11. These should ensure a sharp image from near foreground to infinity. Now, there is a different way of measuring depth of field called hyperfocal distance, but we'll leave that to another time. Now, smaller apertures mean slower shutters. Therefore, a good tripod is essential. The next key component is the focal point. Without a focal point, your landscape pictures run the risk of turning into nothing but vast expanses of nothingness. The focal point can be anything. It can be rocks, trees, or rivers. Anything to latch the eye on. Without this, your pictures will have no strength. Focal points lead the viewer into the picture. They give the images vitality. And don't be fooled into thinking that clear days are the only days you can shoot landscape pictures on. In fact, the opposite is true. Turbulent weather often makes the best landscape pictures. And make sure you try shooting from different angles, up high or down low, whatever it takes. The third component is the sky. Most landscape pictures will either have a dominant sky or a dominant foreground. So be aware of the effect the sky can have on your pictures. In fact, the sky itself can be a key component in a good landscape image. In conjunction, watch for reflections. Under the right conditions, they can make very powerful pictures. And of course, make sure your horizons are level. Nobody wants to see a mountain slip off the frame, stage left or stage right. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest where you could win some amazing prizes. So we've changed our location to have a little chat about compositional rules. Now the rule of thirds in linear lines are, in my opinion, two of the most important rules. Now the thirds states that your subject is more pleasing to the eye if it falls on one of the four intersecting points. But don't get too hung up on this. Just get them off center. And our horizons are either in the top third of the frame or the bottom third of the frame. Linear lines help to draw the viewer into the picture. Things like fence lines or railroad tracks are a really good example of this. Ultimately, we want our images to engage with our viewers. We want to draw them into the picture. And by following these rules, at least initially, you'll create better and livelier pictures. The next key component is golden time. The best light for landscape photography, well, for most outdoor photography, happens about an hour after sunrise and about an hour before sunset, the golden time. It's not a lot of time, so you need to be ready. Make sure you're in your previously scouted location. Make sure your kit's ready. Make sure you're wearing the right clothing. No one wants to scuttle home because they're cold. The next key component is filters. For a long time, landscape photographers have, the, have had the problem of dealing with bright skies and dark lands, until some boffins decided to invent the graduated neutral density filter. There's a delineation from clear to dark. This allows photographers to balance out the light from a bright sky and a dark land, and still preserve detail in both. If you're going to be a serious landscape photographer, you have to invest in a set of these. The other filters I use is a circular polarizer. Now this helps to saturate the sky and cut reflection, if you need it to be, off of water. And lastly, I use the uh, neutral density filter. Not the graduated one, just a neutral density filter. This allows you to put movement in water. It cuts the light coming into the, into the camera, thus allowing you to use slower shutter speeds. You definitely need to use a tripod. Both are great creative tools. The seventh and final key component is improvement. The key to which is innovation, persistence, and learning from your mistakes. If you don't learn from your mistakes, you'll never improve. So embrace them and analyze them. So we found this really great spot at Hever Castle here, this waterfall. Um, it's perfect for using a, a neutral density filter. These are what these are built for, to put a bit of motion in water. This one is a 10 stop filter, so it's really strong. As you can see, it looks a little bit like a welder's glass. You can't even see through it. So you gotta make sure everything's set up in the camera before you even start. I've already taken a meter reading, it's given me half a second. So I know that when I put this filter on the front of that, that meter reading is going to have to go down to about eight minutes. So the shutter's got to open for eight minutes to get the picture. That's why we're using our handy dandy 
locking cable release. So let's get at it. Now I've already locked the focus, locked all the, all the readings in place. Just a matter of pushing the button and waiting. So it's almost eight minutes and we're back. Another few seconds and I can shut the, close the shutter and then hopefully we'll get a nice image. Unfortunately, with these filters, there's always a bit of guesswork involved. So let's see what we got. It looks a little underexposed to me. It could probably use a few more seconds, minutes even, of exposure, but I think I can work with this in the computer. Thanks for joining us today, and don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. Let us know what you think. You can like, comment, or share on this video. And please come by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.